Howdy, everyone. All right, I got another couple of quick updates. Um, again, nothing too exciting, just tidying up some more loose ends and uh, just getting some smaller items out of the way that have been hanging out there kind of in the breeze. So first off is the canopy latch linkage, this linkage in here. Uh, the plans have all of the joints and all the linkage connected with nuts and bolts and I've opted to go with uh, clevis pins and uh, cotter pins instead. So I was finally able to get out to the hangar and bring home my box of uh, clevis pins and stuff like that. The clevis pins, cotter pins, different things. So I went ahead and retrofitted this entire linkage with the... Um, with the clevis pins, you will note that the um, this attaching bar here, I did keep with the uh, nut and bolt assembly on that just because I have no choice because of the way that it's made for the uh, rod end to connect to. And then the one directly behind it, I opted to keep that a uh, nut and bolt as well just because it's the pivot for the uh, actual latching arm and I wanted a nut and bolt assembly on that so I can kind of tighten it to take out the play a little bit. Other than that, everything is clevis pins. And then I had modified the little spring mechanism uh, that runs through the spar bulkhead. I fooled with that because I didn't like the way that it was ultimately fitting together. It seemed to rub on the... Um, on the arm a little bit too much. There was some drag and it just was flopping around kind of sloppy. So what I have done, I don't know if this will show up very well. I actually took a small piece of tubing and I flared the end of the tube and I fit the tube over the wire. I put a washer over the tube the flare keeps the washer from sliding off of the tube and then the spring bears against that washer and then I put a washer on this side as well just to take up some slack so now with the tube being inside the spring the flare the washer this assembly in here is a little bit more robust it doesn't flop around and the action on the lock lever is a lot more smooth so now I'm happy with that. I've, uh, let me go around to the other side again. I also got an order of aircraft wire and that included some shielded wire. So now I have also finished the wire um, bundles, if you will, for the ELT. So I got my three conductor shielded white cable that you can see here. And I went ahead and fabricated that line which connects to the ELT, which will ultimately provide um, GPS data to the ELT if it ever activates. It will give GPS coordinates. So I made up that line, which was the thing that I had been waiting for back here. So with that, I was able to make my connections back here and finalize these runs I made a note here on the ELT itself. There's when you look at the instructions for this, you have to set the baud rates for the ELT to match the baud rates of the device that's going to be feeding it the GPS signal. So I did some research and I looked through my stuff and uh, my um, what is it? I can't think of what it is now. My GPS. I'm drawing a blank, but. It's, uh, it has a, a, uh, a port for, uh, what is it, 9600 baud rate. So I took the ELT apart per the instructions. You just pull the battery off of it. And there's little uh, jumpers that you can move around to change the baud rate for the ELT. So I made sure that it was set to 9600. And I just made a note on the ELT. If for whatever reason I ever forget that, I don't have to come back in here and take it apart. So this is now set for 9600, and like I said, my GPS unit has a, uh, a serial port that is 9600. So this is all ready to go. 
with that set, um, I was able to, of course, run that shielded cable through the tunnel area here and on up forward into the cockpit. That, I believe, is the last of the wiring for back here. Um, there's nothing else that needs to go back here that I can think of. There aren't any more wires that need to go back here that I can think of. So I went ahead and I tidied up the wire runs in here since there are no more that are going to be coming through here. And uh, I tidied them up and I used my black flat lacing cord and laced everything together really nice. Of course, I put the cover on finally. Before putting the cover on, I fabricated this upright. This is a piece of channel. It's part of the, I believe it's part of the electric flap assembly, which I'm not using. So I just retrofitted it in here, made up the bracket, and it bolts uh, through the cover and into the ribs underneath with nut plates. So all I had to make up was the bracket. The channel was already made perfect length. All I had to do was put a couple of holes in it up here with nut plates and put the assembly in. So now this is done, the cover's done, the wires underneath are done. I'm not gonna put this cover on quite yet because I still have potentially like headphone jacks that might come through here. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with the, uh, the stick buttons. The wires will run through the stick, of course, and probably into the center, center tunnel area. So I'm leaving all this open for now. But basically from the seat back support aft, I think this is all done. So those are the things that I've tidied up. Like I said, the canopy latch stuff, this vertical upright and its attaching bracket, the wires inside, the cover, the wires back here. And um, I think that's it. So I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning in here, just to make sure there's no debris. And I'm going to go back to this skin. I believe that skin is mostly finished. I've had it up here multiple times and fitted it. I'm pretty sure it's already been deburred and all that stuff, but I know I have to dimple it. And of course, I got to dimple this bulkhead. So I'm going to bring that skin up from the basement. I'm going to put the final finishing touches on it. And then I'll probably take the fuselage and lay it completely down on the ground like I had done when I had riveted this skin. So I'll get this skin prepped, put the fuselage on the ground, crawl inside, and I think I'm ready to rivet this permanently. So that's the next step. Uh, the other thing, I don't know if I talked about this before or not, but I did some painting. Of course, you can see this vertical piece here has been painted, and then my homemade piece here to fit my throttle quadrant. That's all been done. And then this vertical piece, the matching piece on this opposite side, it's also finished. So that's it. Again, just some loose ends, some things here and there that needed to be taken care of that I've been working on. Um, and like I said, I'm going to move on to this skin here, this skin back here. But the good news is that my canopy pieces have arrived. But I'm not ready to dive back into that quite yet. I want to get some more of this loose end stuff taken care of. I definitely want to get that skin riveted in place. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'll come back and work on the canopy. But you can see I've got a new frame, a new skin. And then over here I've got, uh, this is the splice plate, and then two of these uh, canopy reinforcement deals. So I've got all my parts. I'm ready to roll on that. I'm just not going to tackle it quite yet. I'm going to work on some more fuselage stuff. So that's it for now. And uh, now that I've got some, some hardware in hand with the frame, the canopy frame, we can get cranking on that here pretty soon. Get some of this stuff tidied up and we'll move on. All right. Excellent. Talk to you guys later.